Ah yes, this should be the perfect recipe. Oh, hello there, and welcome to my DIY lair. Now, don't let the spooky decor fool you. I just wanted to have a little bit of fun because Halloween is my favorite holiday. But in this video, we are conjuring up some Halloween DIYs that are inspired by high-end stores like Pottery Barn, McGee & Co, and West Elm. And I am very excited to show you these magical projects that we came up with and you don't want to tune away because we are going to be brewing up a little DIY magic throughout this video that you're not going to want to miss. All over Instagram Reels, I have been seeing people take these basic plastic or foam pumpkins and transforming them or duping them into these Pottery Barn terracotta pumpkins. I love the look of these and I love the idea that you can DIY them. If you've seen this hack on social media, then you might have seen people use flour for them. However, I'm putting my own spin with something that I already had in my DIY stash. And these are the colors that I am using. I'm using chalk paint as the base along with a couple different colors of acrylic paint to achieve a terracotta look. And the secret ingredient, of course, to add some nice texture is baking soda. Such an old tried and true hack at this point but you definitely cannot skip that step for this because it just transforms these basic pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns, I guess, like this one right here. And I painted that on with a foam brush. I find a foam brush with the baking soda paint is so much easier than if you try to use a regular brush. Also, easier to clean than using a regular brush because you don't have to get all those like granules out from the brush bristles. Yes, that's a little tangent right there. But anyway, I gave both of these pumpkins, the one with the jack-o'-lantern face and the one without, two very solid coats of this terracotta paint. Now my secret hack to add the dimension and that kind of white aged powdery look is by using spackle. And I just picked up this container at Dollar Tree, which is the most affordable place to get a container of spackle. And I just thought spackle would make much more sense. I rubbed it into all of the grooves on the pumpkins, kind of at where it would naturally settle if this was dust or aging on a real terracotta pumpkin. And I just chose this as opposed to flour, mostly because, well, I don't keep flour on hand. That's just something I don't use day to day. But anyway, I think the spackle works even better because you get even more control over it. Next up, let's make a wreath. I love making wreaths for my seasonal and holiday decor. And I saw this wreath when I was at Lowe's. That's where I got the pumpkins. So I pulled inspiration from that. And all I did was take a grapevine wreath and then these white foam berries from the floral section at Joann's. These were in the like non-seasonal floral section, not the part where they put out the nice fall or Christmas florals. It's just like the regular aisle, I suppose. And I took some hot glue, I snipped those all down to size and just inserted them around the wreath. I love a good grapevine wreath form for wreaths like this because it's just so easy to tuck your floral stems in and position them exactly where you like them. Now to take this from a basic wreath that you could probably use year round at this point, I'm adding some faux spider web. I just picked up a pack at Dollar Tree because that's where it's super cheap to find. And I began stretching it all the way around the web and I did tiny little sections at a time. So you see me pull a piece across the whole web from one direction. Then I take it from another direction and pull it across the web as well. And then I repeat that and I think I maybe layered on three or four different layers of that faux spider web, stretching it so it looked nice and wispy and 
I guess as realistic as possible. Like, you know, you want to just make it look like a home of cute little Halloween spiders moved in. I can't believe I just called a spider cute. And as that finishing touch, I added this big, large spider from Dollar Tree right here at the bottom and a couple mini spiders that I found at Walmart throughout the web. And here is the final result. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. If this video your fancy you strike, don't forget to give it a like. For the next project, you're going to need a hollow plastic skull, and I picked mine up at, you guessed it, Dollar Tree. And to make the opening in the skull the perfect size for my candle that I'm gonna be placing in it, was a Pringles can. So I just traced around that with a Sharpie and then I took my utility blade and I heated it over a candle. And this is just a really easy hack to cut through thinner plastic way easier. It cuts like butter as soon as that blade gets hot. Of course, you have to be careful both because you're using a sharp blade and an open flame. Next up, I took some quick setting cement by Clickcrete and I mixed it up in this little bucket here with some water following the instructions on the packaging and I began adding it into the skull. Now, here's where this went wrong. I did not initially mix up enough concrete. So as I put it in, the concrete sets very, very quickly when you're using the quick set concrete. And it kind of became a problem, which you will see a little bit later on, but hopefully I came up with a solution to make it seem more intentional. So I ended up just layering in the concrete the best I could. And then I stuck that Pringle can in the top and let that concrete harden. I left it for 24 hours. The next day, I removed that Pringles can. It did leave a little bit of the cardboard behind and the little metal part on the bottom, but honestly, you're never going to see that, so I just didn't care about it. And then I also cut away at the plastic to reveal my concrete skull, and you'll see that it kind of got a little bit messed up around the face, but this is how I decided to try to fix it. I took some watered down white acrylic paint and I lightly brushed it all over the skull and the areas that were supposed to be kind of like the solid areas. So leaving that kind of damaged look, the original concrete color. And I rubbed away some of the excess with a paper towel. So it created just a very light whitewash on the concrete. And I kind of liked the look that this gave. It almost turned that mistake into something more intentional. I think it upped a little bit of the spooky factor or maybe like the aged antique factor where this looks kind of like an artifact or something like that. So, you know, this fail wasn't the worst thing that could have happened. But then all I had to do was add that candle right into the top and I was all set with this spooky little candle holder. Potion is nearing completion, but it does need a few more ingredients. And I think I'll also add a little bit of this. <laughs> That's looking really good. But while this continues brewing and I stir it here, how about a few more DIYs? Such an easy way to change up your regular decor for the Halloween season is with frames so i thrifted these two frames i just really liked the look of them and i thought they had good potential to antique so for the first one i taped off the glass area because i wasn't able to remove the glass the other one i was able to take everything out so it was just the frame 
and I took them outside and I spray painted them. The oval one I spray painted with gold spray paint and the rectangle one I spray painted with satin black spray paint. Then I just let those dry. I always prefer to give my spray paint 24 hours to dry before doing anything else. So to age this gold oval frame, I'm using one of my favorite techniques, which is the antique wax. I picked this up at Michael's a while ago. I've used it a couple times. I prefer to use a bristle brush to apply it and get it right in those grooves and details of this frame to bring out that ornateness of it. And I love how this settles into those areas. And then once you take a paper towel lightly over the surface of the frame, it really brings it to life and starts to bring out that aged antique look. I always work in sections when I do this, just so that it doesn't start drying or sticking in areas that I don't want it. And I just wipe away the excess as I go. And then I just set this aside to dry for a couple of hours because it does need a little bit of extra time versus a regular acrylic paint. And then for the black frame, I loved it as is, but for something just a little extra, I watered down some of this tan or khaki colored paint and I applied it using a brush. So it was right over that bead detail and it settled into all the little crevices there, almost as if like some dust or aging settled in those areas. Now, of course, the frames, they look cool as is and could be used year round, but to make them a little spookier, I got out my Photoshop and a couple old Victorian photos and I manipulated them into some spooky looking photos. I thought I would just share the time lapse here because I find Photoshop time lapses pretty satisfying. But anyway, I made these little pictures. They are linked in the description box if you wanna switch out some of your frames in your home for something more spooky. Those are free and available for you to download below. When I found this vase at the thrift store for $2, I knew that I had to pick it up for a Halloween DIY. So the very first thing I did was clean it up because it was pretty dirty. Then I took it outside and gave it a coat of primer. Once the primer dried, I then gave the entire vase a coat with that same black satin spray paint you saw me use on the frames. Next up, you're going to need to go foraging around your yard or local woods to pick up some sticks that have dropped from trees. And I even gave them a clear coat of some spray paint just to protect them and so it's less weird bringing them inside. And basically all I did was cut them down to size until I had this grand, dramatic, kind of branching looking, creepy, spooky tree coming out from this face. I used a combination of kind of like a wire cutter tool and also a hacksaw in order to do this. And and then to hold them in place, instead of using floral foam, I just used some Spanish moss that I had. I felt like this would be an easier way than sticking something into the vase. That way I can use it for something different later on. And I just placed the branches until I was happy with the arrangement. You could of course leave your tree as is, but I also wanted to take some white polymer clay and I rolled it out using my fondant roller and cut out some moon shapes with a circle cookie cutter. I baked them in the oven following the instructions on the clay packaging, added little strings, and they were ready to hang from the branches. If you don't like moon phases, you could also do bats, you could do spiders, or even some faux spider web. It's time for the final ingredient. And then stir it three times counterclockwise. And here we are, freshly brewed elixir of creativity. And that should last me for another year of DIYs.